hi everyone. Um, my name is Jens. I'm happy to be here, and I'm actually really happy to see so many Belgian faces in San Francisco. <laughs> After spending so much time in between the Americans, it's great to hear some Dutch and French. Um, I'm also happy that Christian talked about CSS, because I'm going to talk about JavaScript, so we can kind of go full circle with regards to web development. Um, today I'm going to talk about isomorphic JavaScript, and the subtitle of my um, talk is One Code Base to Rule Them All, which is a reference to Lord of the Rings, and it'll become clear quite quickly why that is. Um, so first of all, let me tell you something about myself. Um, I'm a software engineer at Story, which is a small startup here in San Francisco. Um, in the team of the night, I'm obviously from Belgium. Um, three years ago, I was actually sitting where you guys are now. I was coming on a trip with Hoast, and then somehow I ended up working at Story. Um, I've been in the Bay Area since 2013, and these are my Twitter handle and my um, GitHub handle. As you can see, I kind of had to change my last name to VDH because my last name is quite hard for Americans to remember. Um, so my handle evolved over the time. Um, so quick overview about my talk. Um, so first I'm going to introduce you guys to a story which is kind of relevant um, to my talk because I'm going to talk about isomorphic JavaScript and the problems um, we solve using isomorphic JavaScript within my company as well. Um, so then I'm going to answer a couple of questions, like what exactly is isomorphic JavaScript? Why would you actually want to use it? How does it work? And then I'm going to show you guys a quick example using Angular 2. And then we'll wrap everything up with a conclusion. Um, so I work for a startup called Story. Uh, basically what we do is we created a digital pub publishing tool um, and a bunch of services around that, um, analytics, transcoding, social media aggregation. Um, we work together with um, companies who publish things, um, like The Hollywood Reporter, Academy of Sciences, CNET, BBC, and a whole bunch of other companies. Um, we created this tool called Story Studio. Um, as you can see in the screenshot, it's basically an editor in your browser where you can build web apps. It's very flexible, um, and it outputs, um, it outputs a web app which is built on a framework that we internally built, which is called N2, or Nitrogen. Um, the framework is built on top of TypeScript, which is basically just JavaScript with types, um, AngularJS, and we use SAS um, for our um, CSS preprocessing. Um, so what's isomorphic JavaScript? Um, I got this definition from isomorphic.net, which is kind of the community slash hub for um, isomorphic JavaScript development. Um, so basically, isomorphic JavaScript apps are um, applications where your <laughs> front-end code and your back-end code um, are basically the same code base. You don't have a notion of a front-end and a back-end. Your entire code base um, is full stack. You only have one stack, basically. Um, so your front-end and your back-end share the same code. Um, I had a little star there, because um, programmers are really bad at naming things. Mm -hmm. And this is also often referred to as universal JavaScript. Not exactly the same, but people mess the two concepts up a lot of times. So if you hear about universal JavaScript, it's probably isomorphic JavaScript. Um, so this is a traditional um, architecture for building a web app. So basically, you have your backend. Um, it's Python, Ruby, Java, PHP, whatever. And then you'll send a page to your front end, which has JavaScript. This is your client-side code. And then your front end might be connected to an API, like, I don't know, Facebook login, Google login. You get some data from somewhere. Um, this is a very traditional architecture. Um, so with isomorphic um, JavaScript, we kind of want to change the architecture. Um, you have one programming language, which, since we're dealing with a browser, we, on, we don't have much choice. We have to use JavaScript. Um, so we'll use Node on the back end. Um, so we have JavaScript on the server. And then we have JavaScript on the client, which is the same code base. And then it could also talk to an API um, if your app requires that. Um, so the big question is, but why would you want to do that? Um, well, I think most of us can kind of relate to this person when it comes to web development. There are so many tools, even watching Christian's presentation, there were like 10 tools that I've never heard about. Um, and like every week, there's, there's a new framework. Um, by the time you started writing your first lines of code, your framework is probably already deprecated. So why don't we make our lives a little bit easier? Um, let's talk about the problems that we're actually trying to solve by creating isomorphic apps. Um, so we're going to create one stack of code. Um, that, mea that means we have fewer decisions to make, right? We, can, we only have to choose one framework, and that's it. Same for client-side and server-side. Um, it's easier to ship your code. You only have one code base. 
Um, it's easier to collaborate. Um, imagine if you have a team that's on the other side of the US, or maybe you have a team in Belgium and a team in the States. Um, it's easier if everyone's working on the same code base and everyone understands the full stack. Basically, the left hand knows what the right hand is doing. So um, no more blaming the back-end engineers, or no more the back-end blaming the front-end. Everyone's working on the same stack. Um, and if you're working in a corporate environment, it's easier to get your stuff approved, because there are, there are less decisions to make. Um, there's the problem of context switching. Um, a sentence you hear a lot when you are into software engineering is, oh, well, you have to wear many hats. Um, you have to do many different things. Um, so when you have a back-end and a front-end in a different language, you kind of have to like switch the context in your brain. Um, you have to switch between Rails and Python and React and Node. And like, you lose a lot of productivity by switching between those languages. You switch between frameworks. Um, you lose a lot of productivity. You have to learn two or three different frameworks. You have to learn multiple programming languages. Um, Ruby and JavaScript are not the same. Um, so it's really difficult. So how about everyone just wear one hat? Let's all wear the JavaScript hat and build one stack completely in JavaScript. Um, also, no more code duplication. Um, I chose this picture of Homer Simpson. Um, they're all clones of Homer Simpson, but they're actually not exactly the same. This, is also hap this also happens when you have duplicate code across your server and your client. It's kind of the same, and it's supposed to act the same, but it's not completely the same. Um, so why don't we just have one code base? No more duplication. We just maintain one JavaScript code base. Um, another benefit from building an isomorphic web app is um, a faster initial page load. Um, I'm sure everyone who's been browsing the web has seen those kind of full screen spinners um, where you're just waiting for a page to load. So what developers actually are doing is they're hi hiding the initial page load from your view because it flickers and there's the initial CSS. Um, so basically what happens if you have a traditional web app is you'll, you'll send your static HTML page over. And then once your static HTML page um, gets into the browser, then the page starts requesting the JavaScript and the CSS. And if you're using a framework like Angular, then it'll request some partials. So you know it'll take quite a lot of time um, in milliseconds, which is a lot of time in CS terms. It'll take quite a lot of time to actually get your full page rendered. So if you have a universal app and you run JavaScript on your server, you can just completely render your entire page, combine all your partials. You can render it completely on the server. You'll ship it to the client, and then your front-end framework, or your, the same framework, it'll take over your page, and it'll handle all the JavaScript from then on onwards. So you kind of have the benefit from a server-side rendered page, but you still have the benefits from having a client-side framework as well. It really is the best of both worlds. Um, by doing that, you'll also have some SEO improvements, because your HTML that's coming from the server is now no longer um, just a JavaScript file that then bootstraps itself at runtime. Um, things like um, crawlers and stuff will be able to recognize the output of your website. Um, so no more um, rendering your page on like a fake browser and then sending it over to prerender.io or phantom.js or tricks like that to make your Angular or your React page work. Um, let's just render the page on the server first and then ship it to the client. Um, so how exactly um, does it work? How are we actually going to build an isomorphic web app? Um, quick question, um, who is familiar with React? Where's the Angular crowd? Yeah. Um, so as you can see, um, there will be blood, um, Angular versus React. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're not going there today. Um, we're not going to make a decision here. Um, because isomorphic JavaScript, it's an architecture. Um, there are different implementations, and that's fine. Um, your favorite framework probably already supports it. Um, Angular supports it as Angular Universal. Um, React supports it. Meteor supports it. Um, you can still use your favorite framework. Um, that's fine. You don't have to learn something new. Um, so basically, um, whatever framework you choose, you'll see the same three steps. Um, you'll render your HTML from the JavaScript app, you'll render it first on the server. Then your browser is actually going to get your full, already pre-combined HTML page. Then asynchronously, your JavaScript is going to load, and then your JavaScript is going to take over the application and handle everything from there. Um, so basically, this is how it would work um, on a more lower, lower level. Um, so you have your isomorphic web app. Then you, have, you basically have your application layer, which is basically your Angular code or your React code. and then under that, you have a rendering layer, which is something that 
people who write Reacts are already familiar with. You have something called the virtual DOM. You don't really touch the actual DOM. You're basically manipulating a data structure that represents the DOM. And then the React will update the DOM whenever it needs to. So while the DOM doesn't really exist on the server, but it could be a giant string, and we can just ship that string to the client when we're ready. So as long as you're just talking to your rendering layer and not really manipulating the DOM directly, you don't actually need a DOM. You can just render a giant string on the server and then ship that over. And then when you're on the client, you can use the DOM renderer and actually manipulate the browser DOM. Um, so you need uh, a framework that has that kind of abstraction layer. Because obviously, if you're on a server, you don't have a DOM, you don't have window. Um, so you need a framework that has that layer. Um, React has that. Angular 2 is going to have that. Um, so Meteor has that. Um, so let me show you a code example. Um, so basically, I got the code from something called um, Angular Universal Starter. Um, really check out isomorphic.net. It's basically the hub for everything um, with isomorphic JavaScript. Um, so basically, let's have a look under the hood of what that would look like. Um, I took out a lot of like definitions and stuff on top and bottom, um, but this is kind of the gist of it. Um, this code is as um, TypeScript. So if you're a JavaScript developer, it should look very familiar. Um, it's just JavaScript with types. Um, so basically, if you're in, this is running on Node. So if you're a Node developer, you already know um, Express. So the first thing I do is I create a new Express app, which is basically your server. And then um, what I do is um, I set the view engine to Express engine. Um, Express engine is something that comes with Angular Universal. It's basically, um, instead of using like a server site, viewing engine, you'll be using Angular's view engine. Um, and then you say, um, when we hit root, app.use root, um, we'll execute this function called ng-app. And then what you see in function ng-app is basically, it'll bootstrap, it'll, it'll create your Angular app on the server. And then after that, we'll just listen on port 3000. Um, so if you look here in um, ng-app function, you'll basically see that um, it sets preboot to false which basically means um, you're going to load all the components, but you're not going to take over. Um, you're not going to like completely boot up Angular, because that's the client is going to do that. Um, so you're just going to like render everything and then not bootstrap it. Um, you'll bootstrap it on the client. Um, so this is all you have to do on the client. Um, so when your code arrives on the client, all you have to do is you say, oh, let's take over the app component. Let's now bootstrap it. And all, everything will already be rendered. And then your client side, um, code will be taking over the app and will be handling everything from there on onwards. Um, so let me show you a small demo of how that would work. Um, so basically here you see a, a small web app. Um, you see the bottom part rendered on the server, and then you see the top part, which is actually rendered on the client. So now that I um, loaded my page and it's bootstrapped, there are no more server refreshes. This is a complete Angular. So if I hit About, it just refreshes, it changes the page without me having to go back to the server because I sent over my initial bootstrap version and then Angular took it over client side. So even if I wasn't about and I would hit refresh, it would still go back to the same page. My server would have pre-rendered the about page because I have a full Angular framework both on my server and on my client. I'm using the same framework. Um, so let me go back to my presentation here. Um, so there are some common pitfalls when you're developing an isomorphic application. Um, first thing you always have to keep in mind, your server is not a browser. You don't have window, you don't have jQuery, um, you don't have any of those things. You're basically manipulating a string. Um, there is no DOM, um, so you have to have a layer that kind of abstracts away the DOM axis so that um, your components behave the same on the server as on the client. Um, so what I would suggest is um, use a framework that has a virtual DOM for rendering um, something like React, Angular 2. I'm sure many more um, will follow. Um, so in conclusion, it's actually possible to maintain a single stack of code. So now we're actually blurring the line between back-end and front-end developers. It's not, there are no real back-end and front-end developers anymore. You're a full-stack developer with your single stack of code. Um, so you can render your page where optimal. If it's the initial page load, you want to render your page on the server. And then when you hit another page, you don't want to go back to the server. You want to run it on the client. Um, so isomorphic JavaScript development is possible today. You can get started tomorrow if you wanted to. Um, use your favorite framework. Use Angular Universal. Use React. Um, as long as it supports some kind of server-side rendering or some kind of virtual DOM, 
um, you should be good to go. And um, this might be a big statement, but I actually truly believe that this might be the future of web development. There really is no reason to have a back-end stack and a front-end stack. Why not have one single stack? Um, I think this is probably like, going to be one of the next big things in JavaScript development. Um, so in conclusion, we really can have JavaScript as one stack to rule them all. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And for all the HoAst students out here, we're actually looking for someone to step into my shoes and become the next new intern here in the States. Um, so shoot me an email at this email address. Um, questions? Mm -hmm.